video, I'm going to try and explain our finite state machine and set it up. We are going to first start with one character. So let's create an FSM, the same way you would create a behavior tree. Just go to create new, and then the canvas will pop right up, just like normal. And as you can see, this is very similar to behavior trees. We're going to right click on the black background. You'll notice a bunch of different options, but we're going to go straight down to nested and do behavior trees. Go ahead and drag that into view and then press control D and let's duplicate a few of these so we can exp so I can explain what our goal is. You can see we have four different states. In state machines, there's only going to be one state running at a single time. That's the big difference between state machines and the behavior trees. As behavior trees, you can run parallel nodes at the exact same time. With finite state machines, you have one state and one state only running. You can see I added a name to all of these, and this is just an example. As you can see, idle walking, maybe that's our default state, and then sometimes if the opportunity presents itself, we'll be in attacking. And then from attacking, we can go back to idle walking. And you see there's fleeing and farming, so that these are different states that are different from the idle walking that the character might be doing. It's completely different from attacking. Now, why are we using nested states, nested behavior trees? We're using nested behavior trees because these behavior trees, when we click create new, are independent from the actual characters. That way, if we open up Toon Soldier World War II, we can just drag that idle walking right on there. Do we need an attacking state for this character? Let's drag the attacking behavior tree into a nested finite state machine. So once we have 20, 30 different um, states that we've built that are congruent or the same for all characters, you can see how quick and easy it can be to build up a character that can be different from the other ones as one character may only need farming, fleeing, and walking. Another character may need idle walking, attacking, and flying, something crazy. Now grab that pointy little triangle off of idle walking and stretch it out to attacking. And from attacking, let's do this same exact thing and bring it back to idle walking. Now it's a loop. Now where it says on finish, it could move from one state to the next if that state finishes everything. That's its condition to switch states. Our condition, let's say for idle walking to attacking, is you're only gonna switch states from idle walking to attacking if you see a character or maybe something punched you in the head. Now you're gonna be attacking. This whole setup may seem a little confusing right now, but as we create this, things will become apparent. And you will see how simple this system actually is. Now go to the idle walking, click create new, and let's create a new folder where all our behaviors will go. So call it behavior, trees, and name this one idle walking. And you can see I was thinking about naming it base. We can change the name later, but I was thinking that because we might have different versions of idle walking. This is our base one, and that there may be other idle walkings very similar to this that we can base that idle walking on this task or behavior tree. First and foremost, let's check to make sure this works. Right click, add an action task and do a debug log text. Hello world. In the bottom left hand corner, we can see the canvas toon soldier. Hello world. But to get into the behavior tree, we actually need to double click on the state. So when you click on toon soldier, the canvas pops up. It's the finite state machine. Double click on idle walk and then boom, that nested behavior tree pops right up.